All right, let's take you now to our person of interest. India's early learning story is what we're focusing on today because it's getting a tech boost from a cheerful pink-eared mm -hmm. AI elephant called Apu, created by Rocket Learning with Google.org. Apu is an AI tutor for children aged 3 to 6. Mm. It uses songs, stories, conversations to build school readiness and confidence among little kids. It's already reached millions of kids and Anganwadi workers across mm. India. The impact is already Already showing. So, from helping parents engage better to unlocking shy children's potential, Apu is bridging the gaps between tech play and human care. We speak to the team behind Apu as well and let's welcome them on the program. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My first question really is that what sparked the idea for Apu and how does it fit into Rocket Learning's big dream for early childhood? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, Rocket Learning, as Rocket Learning, we're a non-profit focused on early childhood education. So our focus is helping zero to six year olds get the best start to life, uh, right, which includes getting ready for school in grade one, but also building their brains and bodies for the long term. About 85% of brain development happens by the age of six. Uh, and so whatever stimulation children get in real life at this age, uh, is super, super critical in improving their IQ, EQ and social abilities as well. Uh, right? So a lot of predictive uh, life success is through this. Uh, the idea for Apu was sparked by the need to be able to support parents and teachers. So the caregivers, the caring caregivers that are in every child's life uh, and help them get the information to be able to support the child with learning and to be able to help the child practice simple activities and conversation and stimulation, right? Uh, Apu is a AI uh, is a AI bot uh, that AI tutor that is able to interact with children and parents and able to help them do some activities, hold conversations with them, do rhymes, songs, stories, social emotional activities, and other things. Now these activities are quite natural already for people who are in the higher income brackets uh, okay. because they have a lot of this information and they have a lot of social pressure also to do this in some sense. Uh, but you know, in communities where traditionally uh, there's not been so much knowledge, uh, using technology is a big enabler. And today, you know, close to 80% households, even in rural India, have smartphones. And that's why you know, generative AI, which is all the buzz uh, across the world, should be used now. Uh, for the bottom of the pyramid as well, which needs it most and that's been our intention with Apu. How does uh, Apu actually work though? Tell us Aziz, like the, the tailoring that you're talking about, you know, for each child, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Apu is catered to children between the ages of 3 to 6 for now. And it's basically a web app, you get a link on WhatsApp, you click the link, uh, a screen opens up where the Apu elephant mascot mm. is there, mm. uh, right? And there's this friendly, fun elephant which interacts with the parents and children. And for example, may ask them uh, about which particular alphabet would you like to learn? And if the, if the child says, uh, you know, or, or maybe it would ask them, what's your favorite uh, animal? And if the child says, Machli, then it would, you know, create a lesson around the Machli and says, okay, what does Machli begin with? Mo, <coughs> can you say Mo multiple times? Then can you write Mo? So there will be a whole module that will develop based on the child and the parent's interest. It will also understand where the child is struggling. So many people, many children, for example, may be able to say the alphabet Mo, but when they say, when you are, when you ask them, what does Magar Mach start with? Uh, they may not then be able to identify that it starts with Mo. Mm -hmm. And so it actually creates uh, and, and suggests videos and other activities that can mm -hmm. be done in real life. Uh, you know, based on the level of the child, it stores that data, suggests personalized activities uh, and is able to conduct them in some ways as well hmm. with the child. And so that's where the whole sort of personalization comes in. This is all in local language, so it'll be in Hindi, Marathi, etc. Uh, and very conversational, right? So it mimics hmm. the tradition of oral storytelling and conversation hmm. and using that conversation in a personalized way, hmm. uh, it's able to engage with the children and pair giver combination. Right. So, Aziz, uh, your claims are that 70% of 3 to 6 year olds hit development milestones in just 6 months with your app. That's quite wonderful. But how are you tracking success rates in kids? Because each child is different, they hit milestones differently, there's a gender gap, uh, it's got to do with genetics as well. So, how are you tracking or measuring success? 
Correct. So I think you know there are two types of major milestones that I'll I'll boil this down into. One is sort of you know what do children at this age need to learn? Because often we feel that you know at this age there's nothing to learn and uh, and you know it just it's time for play, which is true. But play is teaching them essential things. So firstly, it teaches cognitive growth, letter uh, you know, and those are sort of classic skills that we all sort of care a lot about. Letter recognition, number recognition, problem solving, memory building, you know things like working memory. uh can you if you're given a series of tasks can you take the output of one task remember it and use that as an input into a task later on right so essential skills that are required for any sort of problem solving as an adult as well uh on the cognitive side on the other side there's a lot of social confidence uh you know self esteem team work self regulation right so are you able to introduce yourself are you able to greet others can you express your emotions if somebody is mean to you are you able to deal with that uh you know so a lot of these core things that are about behavioral uh management right as well uh so those are two things on the child side but on the caregiver side i think one of the essential things is that can we actively involve parents grandparents siblings uh, in this sort of play based learning at home right and that's that's always been a challenge uh you know i think often parents struggle in this age group to think through what is the best way to support the child at the level that they are at uh, right and this actually helps parents spend more time and more quality time with children improves their relationship with the children as well right so cognitive and social growth for the child and you know quality involvement and 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 loving involvement for the caregiver at home and those are the metrics uh, that we track through pretty sophisticated measurement techniques uh, using people on the ground as well as technology so as you tell us a uh, one set of numbers you shared with us the 3.5 million kids 230000 anganwadi workers have all been impacted by <coughs> apu and apu's work we just want to ask you what are some of the stories you're getting in from the field so tell us about i think it's the the northern belt where you've had a lot of impact just tell us a little bit about that Yeah so I think you know stories from the field are, are what motivate us right uh, you know and and so the macro statistics may be that 70% of children who undergo this program are sort of you know hit their goals as opposed to 50% otherwise uh, but it's when you actually see somebody you know uh, you know benefiting from it tangibly is when it comes home so recently I went on a field visit to Uttar Pradesh uh, very rural area uh, there was this shy four year old girl Priya and you know we, we were told that before that priya was was quite underconfident very shy uh, didn't used to talk much in school you know you picture a classroom and she was the you know the child who would sort of sit at the back uh, and and you know just keep to herself and not really engage in anything that the class was doing and then i think after uh, sort of apu came on the scene and and you know the mom sat with priya and and they both sort of started doing these activities and conversations with apu i think she became very confident because there's nobody to reject her there was nobody to uh, you know judge her and she was able to do conversations at her own pace in the way that she liked and she got a really caring loving response back uh, from from the bot right which is how it's designed uh then she became more confident in talking and that spilled over into a conversation with the family into conversations with the with the other children in the anganwadi center and everybody started noticing how uh, this shy little kid is just now becoming sort of you know much more active and sort of the life of the of the class in some sense uh and so you know i think that way is even for the for the parent often uh you know shy kids who are withdrawn and you know may not be engaging much are sort of relegated to saying that they are not very bright and they can't do much uh, right and so priya's mom's hopes for her really became much much bigger at the end because now she saw this vivacious child uh doing so much and you know started dreaming that oh later on then then my child uh, should go to the best sort of education and should yeah. you know really make an amazing life for herself and that whole confidence even in the mother and and the teacher came in as well right so i think those are the stories of what can be done if we use technology thoughtfully combine it with community methods that are already at play right and 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 you know just uh, give access of of some of these marvels of gen ai and so on to communities to use as they would like to use them best right i think as is the best part about this ai tool is and when i see ai adoption actually help our the ones who are most remote i think that's when it needs to be celebrated the most as well but talking about expansion there uh, you have expanded to punjab even south india all of that sounds very exciting but what's been the toughest part of actually scaling an app like this in the in remote corners yes so you know typically one of the biggest 
issues in sort of scaling up any sort of learning, teaching, other programs has been the massive linguistic diversity in India, in India today, right? right? So we have 22 official languages in some sense and many, many more dialects, right? And so typically we've been doing a lot of work in the Hindi heartland. Uh, but actually the advantages of, of the AI revolution in the last three, four years is that actually if you train the AI in Hindi, it's relatively little effort to also uh, you know, get that uh, AI tutor to also start coaching in Marathi, uh, to have it start coaching in uh, in Punjabi, in in Kannada, in Telugu, and other languages like that, right? So, uh, so that becomes much much uh, more feasible and and you know easy for the users to learn in local languages, which is the best at that age. Uh, however, of course, there are still challenges, uh, you know, related to that. Uh, currently, AI models are better in English, you know, best in English reasonably good in Hindi, still weaker in other languages, but a lot of work is being done, uh, you know, by the Indian government through the Indian AI mission, as well as a lot of the large uh, private providers such as, you know, Gemini has done a lot of work in uh, trying to sort of make this happen uh, in different languages. And, uh, and you know, so it's getting better every day. And soon we anticipate that, you know, you can have this sort of product in, in you know, 20 languages, 100 dialects, and they, it can work really well for children in every remote part of the country. What's the biggest roadblock to equitable early education? Because that's right at the crux of what we're discussing, right? Education for all. How is Apu changing that? Yeah, so I think, you know, a big roadblock is that uh, at the high end uh, sort of income bracket in India, you know, we are sending our children to, uh, you know, highly engaged sort of preschools and as parents, you know, I have a one-year-old daughter of, of my own. We are spending hours, you know, in the evenings, in the mornings, on weekends, uh, with children doing activities, doing stimulation, tracking their milestones, getting maybe over worried at every small thing, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, if you look at the, you know, the bottom 50% uh, from an income perspective, uh, right? I think the uh, this awareness uh, that at the early age, you know, parents really need to focus on learning for children through play and activity and games and that this will change their lives. Uh, that awareness is not there, even if the awareness is there, what exactly to do at what different point of time, you know, that knowledge is not there. Uh, at sort of four years of age, should my child be able to recite 1 to 30? Or is it better for the child to be able to, you know, uh, mark objects in increasing order of size, right? What is the right thing to do? Uh, so I think that is the that is a huge challenge to equitable early education and Apu is working as an AI tutor helping parents as well as Anganwadi workers which is the world's largest you know preschool system in that sense uh, and is helping both of these groups uh, engage with children better and it's being able to interact directly with children under the supervision of parents and teachers uh, to allow them to speak to allow them to practice and to allow them to have fun while learning so so you know that's how we're trying to solve the challenge of of that inequity, uh, which begins right in the in the very very early years. Right. So, uh, Aziz, let's shift focus to edtech sector on the whole. Now, there has been a lot of push that has come in from the government. There are slogans like "Poshan B, Padhai B" that the Prime Minister himself makes. Uh, how are these working in? Because we've seen the education sector also go through its own blip. Yeah, so, you know, I think uh, actually Poshan Bhi Padai Bhi is the sort of umbrella initiative, you know, uh, scheme of the government of India for mm -hmm. early learning for children in the 0 to 6 age group. I think all credit goes to, to, the, to the government of India and, mm -hmm. and, and all state governments who are really pursuing this in mission True. mode and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, have taken on board the thinking that nutrition and stimulation before the age of six is what will probably create the next generation of India's kids, right? Uh, in, in, 19, in in the next 25 years. Yeah. Uh, so this is the umbrella mission and we've been supporting, uh, you know, training and support of, of daycare workers and others in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, how this, uh, and you know, I think it's part of the, as it's a part of this mission that we've put together Appu, right? So the question is how can Appu support this sort of scheme? And, you know, we've released it as an open source, uh, you know, technology that can be used by anyone who wants to use it mm -hmm. and that can really help daycare workers and parents uh, pro bono from our perspective and, uh, and you know, we hope that this can fuel uh, what the government is, is looking at in terms of potentially uh, sure. for every mm -hmm. child in the country. Hmm. Aziz, what about uh, the debate around digital classrooms though? Because we are essentially giving young kids 
tablets and devices and you're also seeing countries across the world some of them introduce policies where they're pulling back so they're saying no phones or they're saying no social media at a certain age yeah no screens so do you think india actually has lessons to take from that how do you see it absolutely you know so i think uh the question is maintaining a good balance right how do you do that you know the answer is not in saying that uh, you know you will not use technology as an aid at all uh, the answer is also not saying that technology will replace uh, the the adult teacher the caregiver and so on right so uh, so neither of those solutions can be correct for a country like india we know that uh, in person interactions with community adult teachers those are important uh, and those are cr critical actually uh, but can technology help those caring adults in a child's life do a better job uh, with a child right uh, which they desperately want to do so i think that's where technology comes in uh, you know and where technology is directly being used by children also even under supervision we are sure we, you know we ensure that there's not more than 5 to 10 minutes of screen time uh, per day uh, right so that we ensure that the time that goes on watching youtube videos when the parent gets tired and gives the phone to the child to see youtube videos that is actually being replaced by 10 minutes of learning play based activity uh, this is voice based learning so you know it's part of india's oral tradition as well and family led engagement is happening here so so i think the question the the question is that you know not that we should we be a sweden which has outlawed all technology because uh, you know, uh, they're saying that we have all these teachers who are spending all the, all the time here. But the question is more that how can we support and augment the teachers and parents who are here in India uh, who may have limitations but are really wanting to help kids learn and do it in a way, you know, within 10 minutes using all this, uh, you know, guardrails and constraints to make sure technology is really aiding the human uh, who is leading all of this.